Welcome to class tonight. I do hope that you all are having a great night. Tonight we're actually going to be talking about something that I know you already know a great deal about. You've already learned about this during your school career. I know this was taught at least in third grade, and I'm almost positive that it was taught basically every year since. But this is a great, um, a great concept to be reviewing because it is so incredibly important. This comes up over and over and over again. So we are going to be working, we're going to be discussing on order of operations. And hopefully that should ring some bells. Now this should actually be, be a pretty easy lesson because, to remember because um, there are several called mnemonic devices or ways to memorize how this works and the, and, and, and the, the steps that you need to take. You're very probably very familiar uh, with the with this term. So let's go ahead and get started. Please open your books to page 48. Page 48, that's gonna be your the absolute best help. Now guys, you should all remember the phrase, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Hopefully you remember that. If you don't, it's okay. But I know a lot of teachers, my teachers, uh, way back when I was in school, use that device, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, to help us remember the order of operations or how we should be doing things. So before we get to that though, let's talk very briefly about this. You see several large problems on the board. We call these right here, we call these We call them expressions. Now, an expression is simply a mathematical thought. That's all it is, a mathematical thought. So really, technically, 1 plus 1 is an expression. But this right here, we're going to call this expression. Now, that looks kind of scary. I see a plus sign and a multiply sign. What in the world am I supposed to do with that? Well, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I want to emphasize that. We call this right here, we call it an expression. So I'm going to have to erase that now so we can get to everything else. So now, now that I know I am dealing with expressions, now I can work on solving it. Now, mathematicians many, many years ago sat down and decided, hmm, we need to have an order for how to solve problems. And so they created this order. Now I will say this order did not come from some, some specific process or formula or equation or anything. This simply was guys sitting down and say, all right, uh, well, let's do this first, then this, then this. Okay? So now the order goes like this. And you'll actually find this on page 48 in your book. So I would encourage you to look at this. You see this right here. The first step is parentheses first and then exponents. So we see the please, excuse, then we go multiply and divide, but there's a slight change here. I don't point that out. So multiply and divide, and so please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So you see where we get the idea. But I want to point something out, and our book made this very different, actually, and very, uh, well, honestly, it was difficult for me when I first read it. But this change is this. We do not just automatically do multiplication first and then division. It's multiply and divide from left to to right. So that means you solve multiplication and division in order from left to right. We're going to get to one. We're going to try, I'm going to add one here in just a minute that deals with that and then you have to practice that because it's, it's a difficult thing. You can't just multiply first and then divide. It's multiply and divide from left to right. And then you add and subtract once again from left to right. So this means you could possibly divide before you multiply, or you could possibly subtract before you add. It all depends on this right here, from left to right. So let's go and get started on these. Let's practice these. Now you'll notice I'm actually going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm actually going to be creating a kind of a flow to these problems because I want to show you exactly what you should be doing. I also think you should try to uh, copy this, copy my idea, that would be most helpful for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm looking parentheses first, then exponents. Let's see. Uh, well, nothing in there. No parentheses and no exponents. So let's go on to the next one. 
Multiply and divide from left to right. So let's see. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. I see a multiplication problem right there. So I'm going to multiply first. So that means I leave this completely alone. That stays alone. And I'm going to focus on this first. So eight, sorry, 11 times 6 is going to be 66 plus 18. So you see I left 18 alone, and I just multiplied those together, and I got 66. So now I add and subtract from left to right. So it's going to be 18 plus 66. And we're going to add those together. So 18 plus 6, that's going to be 4, and that's going to be 6, 7, 8. So my answer is 84. So for the first one, I followed my order of operations, and I got 84. Let's do one more that's going to look different. So here we have 6 plus 20 in 4 tenths divided by, remember that's the divided by sign, 2. So now we look here, so whoop, no parentheses, no exponents, multiply and divide. Ooh, I see a division problem right there. So let's go ahead and divide first. Now, going back to our dividing decimals, Dividing decimals, the answer is going to look like this. So when I, when I divide this out, it's going to be 10 and 2 tenths plus 6. 10 and 2 tenths plus 6 then is going to equal 16 and 2 tenths. So once again, I simply followed my order of operations, divided first, and then added. Let's go ahead and do two more. Now you'll notice actually I still left this up here because this is a very helpful thing to have up. In fact, as you solve these problems, you may want to look back at page 48 to make sure you're doing it correctly. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So once again, parentheses first, then exponents. So let's see. Uh, no, ooh, I have parentheses here, so I'm going to need to deal with those first. So let's go ahead and deal with those first. So 6 divided by 2 is going to be 3. So I'm going to write 30, because I'm leaving that alone, minus 3 times 3 equals, I don't know what it equals, I'm going to find that out. So let's see, now I've done parentheses, any exponents, uh, no, I don't see any exponents, now I multiply and divide, let's see, oh, there's a multiplication problem right there, so it's going to be 30 minus 9, because 3 times 3 equals 9, multiply and divide, and now I add and subtract, so now I'm going to subtract, 30 minus 9 is going to be 21, and so my answer, 4, this problem right here looked scary, but I simplified it down and did 21. Now you see, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I was trying to, to tell you about. The flow, I see a step all the way down. That's what I think these problems should look like, especially when you get into algebra and uh, algebra 2 and all those wonderful subjects in high school. That This system right here, the stepping, is going to be really important, so I would strongly encourage you to use that system. All right, let's do one more, and wow we that is a big one right here. 3 and 4 tenths plus 5 times 2 minus 1 and 7 tenths. Let's go ahead and get started. So no parentheses, no exponents, multiply and divide. Let's see, Ooh, there's multiplication right there, so I'm going to do that first. So, okay, so I have 5 times 2 equals 10. Now I'm going to so I multiply, there's no division problems. Now I'm going to add and subtract from left to right. So here's the left, here's the right. So I'm going to add and subtract in order from left to right. I'm not going to subtract first. I'm going to start with the adding. So 3 fourths plus 10, or sorry, 3 and 4 tenths plus 10 is going to be 13 and 4 tenths minus 1 and 7 tenths. Now I simply solve that right there as well. And just like that, magically poof, you see the solution right here. So 13 and 4 tenths minus 1 7 equals 11 and 7 tenths. 11 and 7 tenths. So that is the solution to that problem. All right, we're going to do one more because I still want to practice a little multiply and divide from left to right. Because honestly, for many, many years, I thought, well, you always multiply first and then you divide. Well, no, it's multiply and divide from left to right. Alright, so now we see one more problem. This should actually be equal sign, so just even like that. I now we see one more problem, but here I see division and I see multiplication. And in this case, the division comes before the multiplication. So let's go ahead and look through. Parentheses, no parentheses, no exponents, 
multiply and divide from left to right. So now I have to do this. So I'm going to multiply. I see, ooh, division first. So I'm going to do that first, and then this second. So 45 divided by 4 fifths is going to equal 10 plus 6 and 2 tenths times 3. Now I'm going to solve this. Multiply and divide from left to right. So I'm going to go move over here. So 6 and 2 tenths times 3 is going to be... Um, so it's going to be 6, 18 and 6 tenths, so 10 plus 18 and 6 tenths, so the answer is going to be 28 and 6 tenths. Alright, so that was one example that I wanted to stick in there as well to make sure you understand it's not divide, it's not multiply first and then divide, it's multiply and divide from left to right. Alright, there's one last part of this that we do need to cover. Word problems. We need to be able to take a word problem and put it into an expression. So this is the word problem. You buy two jeans, you should underline that, at 1995 each, but get a $5 discount. Ooh, nicely done. And then get three shirts at $15.99 each. If the tax is $4.35, how much do you owe? So ladies and gentlemen, it's going to look like this. I have two jeans at $9.95 each, or $19.95 each, so it's going to be 2 times $19.95. Now, a $5 discount, that means you're actually minusing that. So, minus $5, and then we get three shirts, so add three shirts at $15.99. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the first part. So I have two jeans at $19.95, and I get a $5 discount, so that's the minus $5 here. And then I have three shirts at $15.99 each. Now, ooh, it says if the tax is $4.35, how much do you owe? Now, tax is added on, so you're going to add at the very end $4.35. So you go, wow, Mr. Harris, that looks complex and long. It really isn't. For these kinds of problems, I like to pull out a handy dandy tool that you are most likely familiar with, and I am okay if we're doing this. Oh, look at that. It's called a calculator. So my suggestion would be to use this for some certain problems, problems like this that are very, very long. You're not going to see problems like this on TCAP, so let's go ahead and practice using a calculator. I'm going to use different ink. So I have here, I have 1995 times 2. So, right here I have 39, 39.90 minus $5 plus 3 times 15.99 plus $4.35. Now remember, I need to do multiplication first, so that I should focus on this right here. 3 times 15.99. So let's go and pull that up, clear this, and there we go, 47.97. So here I have 39.90 minus $5 plus that, and so now I'm going to add and subtract from left to right, so I'm going to start over here and work that way. Now I'm actually going to simplify this because you, as you can see I am running out of room on the board. Let's clear this. So $39.90 minus $5 equals $34.90. Alright, now I'm just going to add all these up together very quickly. So, plus 47.97 equals plus the tax. Oh, oh, stink. Plus. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, $87.22. So my, dollar, my final amount is $87.22.
Now, I made that, that was uh, very big, I understand that. But it's completely understandable and completely doable as well. So I hope that makes sense. And I simply followed my order of operations. Well, ladies, that is, ladies and gentlemen, that is the lesson. I'm going to scroll back one to remind you. The key is, remember these things. Parentheses first, then exponents. Multiply and divide from left to right, and add and subtract from left to right. You do those things, you remember those things, and you will do just well. Your homework tonight will be page four, uh, will be page 49 through 50, so page 49 and 50, 6 through 12 even. Once again, only six questions, but you can do it. Have a great night. We'll see you all tomorrow. Let's practice this.